penitent one, returned from the tomb, and walking among the mourners, your awakening is now written on the eternal pages. Anunthiada is my name, and I hail from the heavenly mountains on high, the seat and the beginning of all that is holy, so that I may address you. Look upon me thus as a preceptor in this enterprise, hailing from the highest of all seats. Penitent one, the miracle shall give birth to a new child in a great heart descended from the clouds that watches over the ancient city of the blessed name from on high. You must reach it to stop its birth. But on this ascending path of penitence, the Arch Confraternity awaits you. Those penitents that the miracle itself took as its sentinels now await your arrival. Orospina, the Confraternity of Embroiderers. Benedicta of the Confraternity of Endless Orison. Odon of the Confraternity of Salt. Lesmes of the Confraternity of Incorruptible Flesh, all under the dictate of the oldest penitent, the first among them all, who was Eviterno, father of the penitents. Penitent One, the miracle has instilled three regrets in the consciences of three of its guardians. Only by revealing them shall you achieve the humiliation of the sculpted figures that hold up the city, allowing you to ascend to its upper reaches, and finally to the Great Heart. Look for the guardians.
Welcome to my most humble of workshops, which is a flurry of sawdust, glue, and varnish. Montagnes is my name. Master sculptor, one of those who, with steady hand and silver chisel, patiently carve out from the wood the faithful shapes of our true saints, so that they might be contemplated and revered by the devout. No trace of light remains in my glassy eyes, yet still I know what thou seekest and needest. For are we not all penitents on this earth? In some way, the miracle proclaimed that, as my profession was that of a master sculptor, I should carve in wood the figure of the Most Blessed Lady as my last work of art. Penitent one, I beg you help me in this, my final piece of work. Seek out for me the finest chisels and tools, the most wondrous of pigments, and the most delicate of varnishes. And I can sculpt for thee figures that will fit into the altarpiece you carry on your back. Like this very one I offer to thee here. Please accept this as a gesture of my unending gratitude. It is but the first piece of many more I shall carve for you. Now I shall place it upon the altarpiece upon your back, and you will feel its grace, but also its burden. The hands of the miracle will guide me in the carving in accordance with the memory you bring me. May they guide thee as they guide me, penitent one. The piece on your back now has more. Here I will wait for you until you gather more marks of martyrdom to extend your altarpiece. May the hands of the miracle guide thee, penitent one. There remaineth but tears for me, and forgiveness for those of you who seek it. Where are the bereaved now? Where are the repentant? How long since the long agony of this sacrament began? Now that your penance of silence and the pain that plagues your flesh has led you to my dark confessional. Let me purge the guilt you bear, and the penitent one return when the guilt scorches your brow. I will free you from your burden, for that is my purpose. Penitent one, I will free you.
Who are you? Whose face and name you keep hidden? No. Your name is of no consequence, if your footsteps have led you to me. Yerma is mine own. But this is not the right moment, for the steps that my promise inspires are swift, and the will that directs them unshakable. This hatred, which blinds my reason with shadows. I must leave at once. Sleep, my child, sleep.
prey. This mallet is so wonderfully balanced in the hand that it feels quite effortless to move. Know that you have my gratitude, Penitent One. May the Penitent one, I will... The word I sense... May the...
Here our wills cross once again, O oh, nameless, penitent one. For a long time now, my life has been naught but a constant struggle to fulfill a promise as old as these lands. Is it your wish to meet her? When I was but a girl, I was able to escape the horror of the deformity engendered by the miracle. A miracle that chose the clean reflection of the still waters of a lake to reveal the truth it held in store for each of those who gazed within it. The old bell, which had fallen to the bottom of the lake many years before, began to ring, making the waters ripple to its eerie chime. Our reflected faces began to distort before our terrified gazes, and the miracle ended up capturing that work, that disfigured horror on the waters, as if it were a fresco, making everything that had been reflected in them disappear. As I fled, I turned my gaze towards the lake and beheld that ghastly event from afar. Penitent one, can you not hear it? We find ourselves in the confines of one of the ill-fated forms of the miracle that yearns to meet thee. Do you wish me to join you in your next confrontation? There you shall find me, and in communion we shall fight. Billowing clouds of dust herald your arrival. Dust in the air that is born from the erosion of the walls, the statues, and our own bones. These stones heard so many sins that they could do no more than succumb, shuddering before their guilty echoes. Echoes that could not bear the seclusion that I imposed upon them and that escaped from me. Crawling along these walls, eroding them until their immaculate ashes buried us all. Penitent one, you will now reveal your sins, those that your tears can never atone for.
be witness to this vigil before my final journey. I, Radames, spent my long life listening to the confessions of so many burdened hearts. Even after death, I could still hear the echo of their mournful voices, begging to be heard again, pleading for confession. But their pain never managed to bring tears to my eyes. One of those echoes, those incessant voices, was the very voice of the miracle who commanded me to guard its sacred regret. I obeyed, and it was then that my tears did flow. Penitent one, you who come to witness the miracle, behold. The memory of him still hurts. So it was that a humble married couple, torn apart by their inability to conceive a child, entrusted themselves in their utter desperation to the miracle. A miracle whose light seemed to have gone out in all our hearts. For having long ceased to bathe us in its benevolent radiance, we believed it extinct. The dying day already puts out its celestial light, causing my eyelids to droop. Let the miracle cast open its black gates, so I might venture to where that terrible dream, from which one never wakes, awaits. Penitent one, you have encountered one of the three regrets. The first part of the testimony of the birth has been revealed to you, and the eminent sculptor figure of the father has descended. Find the other two guardians. Penitent one, the first find.
How? May the sacrament your guilt has been purged but will remain my eternal burden for that is my appointed purpose now Open up the skin and red flesh. Uncover the lie that my shell conceals, for I am only blood and bones. So allow the chalices to be filled with those who toast kings and priests. Now I shall grant thee a new flask. Closer and contemplate this delicate tumbaga. The embroidered shawls, the silk dresses. You are in Rehima's shop. My goods are my home, my bed. They are as much a part of me as I am of them. You point, and this diligent arm will surely grant your request.
Here among my way. Oh, blessed are we, for I behold a penitent. Humbly allow us to present ourselves to your reverence. We are Medardo and Escolastico, pilgrim merchants and scribes by trade. You never know where precious assets may be. What prey can be unjust or malevolent in walking the roads in pursuit of a twofold profit? That of the pocket by selling, and that of the spirit by prayer. While Medardo pays penance in his meditative meanderings, I take care of the business side of things, sparing not a drop of ink to write about the beautiful landscapes of the many varied paths we travel. But go ahead and cast your eyes upon our shop window. The objects that were lost on voyages have great appeal and fascination as they have become a reminder of the feat itself. Cast your eyes upon our shop. Is there nothing? What a pi-
And you may die, perhaps even rot away before my very eyes, but that will not help you. I can wait as long as it takes, long after those insatiable worms have finished their repulsive feasting. In the end, I will discover that secret thou hast been concealing from me since the first dusty cobweb appeared under the eaves of this home. And since the first wrinkle marred thine already pale and bony forehead. But for now, behave yourself. Can you not see we have a guest at our table?
Sit down. Welcome to this humble table. My name is Castula, for that was what my parents so desired. It is a great rarity these days for footsteps to echo through these lonely halls. And believe me, yours have not gone unnoticed. What dost thou seek here? Dost thou crave the same fate that befell so many unfortunates who ended up possessed by the very gold they sought to make their own? Yes, this manor is awash with me. If only I could find the hiding place of my brother Trifon's manuscript, perchance I might have at least one less mystery to solve. How deluded you are. Did you think you could keep it from me any longer? Do not listen to this brother of mine, dear visitor. Do not believe his untruths. If we had... If we had my brother's manuscript, we would...
sister. Stern, terrible Castula. Seekest not to deceive me with your detached expression. That serene indifference that becomes thee so well. I know you hear my words, even though the look you return to me arises from the depths of the shadows themselves. Welcome, visitor, to this table of reproach and intrigue. My name is Trifon, for that was what my parents so desired. Pay us no attention to my sister's words, nor her silences. It is by looking at her withered face one can sense her malicious. No, I am no longer interested in your confabulation. Thine understanding has long been governed by a dastardly imagination. I remember when you had that old blue-green headscarf. <laughs> it was so soft. You kept saying that it transported you back to other times, to distant memories. If you held it now in thine hands, Perchance you might cease with the constant accusations. You would never have lost it if, just for once, you had stopped rummaging through my affairs. Welcome to this palace. How silent, how mundane these luxurious chambers have been. Halls that were once frequented by the most distinguished of visitors. They all ended up staying here. Captives. Trapped petrified like golden statues, prisoners of the very riches they craved. Dance now with my steel, penitent one. We will embroider your flesh in sacred torment.
be witness to this vigil before my final journey. I, Orospina, am the daughter of the looms, of the mantle of gold and fine silver and scarlet and white, eldest sister of the confraternity of embroiderers, ancient secret of the needle and the thread. Where I go, nor shimmers with gold, and my graceful steel will never again adorn the air with its elegant silver calligraphy. Penitent one, you who come to witness the miracle, behold. But their plea was so humble and true that the miracle whose lofty reasons are beyond our earthly ken, finally stirred from its slumber, aroused from its repose, and moved by the sweet melody of such noble supplications, it blessed this couple of devout believers, whose faith had never wavered, granting them the child they so desired. The warm and golden caress of twilight invites me to close my eyes. Let the miracle cast open its black gates so I might venture to where that terrible dream from which one never wakes awaits. Penitent one, you have known the second of the regrets, and with it, another part of the testimony. The figure of the mother has descended, full of mercy. Anon, the upper part of the city, separated from the rest by the miracle's design, will join the rest. Find the last guardian. Penitent, the figure, anon. Fine. Bring me chalices and vials. Here am I.
these black mists deceive your figure of the sinuous mists. Pay us with the false coin, the one with jagged edges and forgotten features, the one that is worthless and desired by none. Thus, we will guide you through the dense blackness to the remotest. Now pray, lie down on the cold stone and let the black curtain envelop you. And for your thirst, I... Oh, 
Make way for he who does not yet know me, who has not yet kissed me. Parishioner, you come seeking mine own sweet blessing. Kneel down and place your lips on my hope. Valorous, feel how my grace fills thee with joy. I alone am thy refuge. Blessed are those who venerate me. Bestow upon me... Bestow upon... May those who seek seclusion enter. <sighs> Miracle, thee who possess the keys to open all things and the hands to lock them, welcome thine servant. Penitent one, Thee who comest in search of the morning behind our black veils. Find my daughters, and snuff out the light of the candles that accompany them. Only then will you be able to enter into their morning. The vigil find my daughter. When darkness descends on my tiles, my lanterns awake. It is their light that protects us in this shadowy corner. For my name is Sagrario. Knotting rosaries is my penance, and I cannot serve a more virtuous cause than thine own. Pen if you give me the knots, I shall increase the mysteries of your rosary, so that they might fill thee with consolation. Do you have rosary now? Let my hands not a new mystery on your... Your rosary now treasures you. Do you have rose now? Let my hands not a new mystery. Your rosary now. I shall wait.
Frey. The altar here, I will wait for you. May the hand.
crown of majestic buildings was built to study the awe-inspiring glow. No one has ever laid up. The miracle bestows its blessing upon us all by revealing to us what has long been hidden, invisible, and out of bound. Cast your eyes upon our... We have no more items left. Pray.
always live. I live again inside this merciless and cold metallic casing. I live in this cage in the shape of what was long ago my body. I live and I feel that I am directed by forces that undermine mine own will. I live although when I close my eyes in the intimate darkness behind my eyelids I am still dead. Be witness to this vigil before my final journey. My body has been returned to me. At last, I am now master of this flesh. Of this, how sweet the pain. When it is our own penitent one. You, who came to witness the miracle, behold. But the miracle who bestows and wrests away its grace with inscrutable agency, saw its will tarnished in its prolonged absence. Erring in its newly created work, it conferred on that child as much its own as that of another. The blessing of deformity, it spread throughout our land like a contagion. Its accursed seeds germinating like the wounds that sprout upon the scourged flesh of the repentant. The dying day already puts out its celestial light, causing my eyelids to droop. Let the miracle cast open its black gates, 
So I might venture to where that terrible dream from which one never wakes. The full testimony has been revealed to you, and the counterfigure of the witness has at last descended. The three great stone figures of the family have humbled themselves before us all. Raise your eyes as the dazzling beauty of the upper reaches of the City of the Blessed Name welcomes you. Now go forth. Let not doubt leave its vexatious mark upon you. You put. So. Upper reaches of our city, once unreachable and unfathomable, have descended. Countless legends tell of the many secrets that the heights have hidden and laid watch over for seeming eternities. Can it be the city that prostrates itself before so many parishioners, beckoning us to witness the birth of the child more closely? What holiness lies before us? Cast your eyes upon our shop window. Is there water pit?
Welcome the flower, but the beauty. So, so be it. The snow. Allow you to ascend. The miracle first asks that you descend. Follow the melody that rises from deep within. For it will be the key that will give you access to the shadows that slumber beneath our heavy floors. one of merciful steps my golden mask weeps to see you before me you are in the garden of high choirs i am another of the holy brothers of the golden visage born of the miracle oh tireless time that travels without delay and erases a past conjuring up uncertain futures make us remember when the miracle imposed its dark punishment upon us that which prevented us from soaring and traveling with the breath of the wind penitent one free my brothers who by the designs of a miracle that already seems a stranger to us are imprisoned and scattered throughout these lands under the gaze of the great heart that has risen on high only they will allow you to climb Help us by freeing more brothers, and we shall reveal to you.
The vigil is find my daughter. I shall wait. Feel your further, ix mine own penitent one. I shall. Bestow a To allow you to follow the melody that rises from deep within, for it will be the key that will give
Help us by free.
Now I shall enhance the vital... I shall wait for thee. I shall wait for thee. Bring me more vibe. Bring me challenge.
to your reverence. I address After seeing myself freed from grief following long years of regret, I dreamt I saw some bees create a honeycomb of sweet honey inside the now empty recesses of my soul. But the miracle does not distinguish between dreams and truth. And O oh, creatures of the miracle, your reverence's visit to this repentant, punished sinner shall not be in vain. Take this as If perchance this gift I give you should break, losing its worth, return it to me. This honey, which doth not cease to flow, will be... Let the bees con... Come back here.
penitent one. Is it your wish that I can- Indeed. It was the miracle's will. The lady. The reflection of desiring that ref- As she looked, do you wish me to join you? There you- How dark and uncertain are the rooms where the miracle allows us to see and talk to one another. Even after the deaths. Even after the dreams. Penitent One, we are in the Chapel of the Five Doves. And before you prevails the narrative voice of the Witness. All that remains of me is testimony. For my deceased body lies exposed in its urn of crystal and gold. You return from the long dream to avoid the birth. You will have need of the uncorrupted tongue that my mortal remains still harbor, whose forbidden whispers will guide thee on the path to such an undertaking. Release the five doves, and thus the urn containing my body shall be opened. Wake up now from this dream.
blessed our feast your eye. We have pray. We pray.
penitent one. Be pleased to receive this gift that a candid voice in a dream asked me to give thee. A voice whose owner shall... Oh, heart that descends from heaven, what doth thou seeketh from us? The miracle shows us mercy, and bestows upon this shadow the right to speak. Never will I comprehend for what exalted reasons I was chosen to witness and narrate the events by which the miracle sought to return to us. For many eons have passed since it abandoned us. Oh, I see my request was granted, and that blessed pilgrim delivered my offering to you. Cast open the cages whose keys were stolen, Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison.
What does this mean? I can't hear you. Don't leave me. Stay. Even with intrigues. Even with secrets. The dark sockets. What memories? What? The dark what memories. The dark what memories. Dark.
the file you know that Allow me to present you.
cast your eye. We have pray.
forget. Those verses chain us to an everlasting prayer that transcends death itself. Join me in endless orison. The miracle was to create a new icon, an incarnate icon for all, a symbol in which all our faiths, pleas, and hopes might be united in communion, so as to expand its diminished, almost extinct, might. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison.
prefer to pray you cast your is there nothing what a Feast your We have pray
Lacking sufficient mastery, the miracle did fail in its efforts to incarnate, manifesting only in the form of disease, deformity, and pain. It spread more and more of its aberrations, like sores on diseased skin, in many places and on innocent bodies. Dove, who borrows thine color?
Stop. This sacred place is about to crumble around our very ears. And I have barely strength enough to support the entrance to our church. My name is Regula. And this body, which towers over you, is nothing more than the punishment for an abhorrent sin I committed many eons ago. The miracle is just, and granted me the vigor to sustain this threshold. However, after interminable efforts, I feel my strength gradually waning. With each tremor, these merciless rocks sink deeper into my flesh. Should my arms yield to the weight, the shrine will be buried, and the saints never again venerate. For pity's sake, hear my cry. Between the tremors, I am sure I heard the collapse of some of the chapel walls. I am convinced that a passage into the sentry has opened up from somewhere within this. I implore you. Penitent one, each new.
The end for which I have long yearned has finally cometh. Bear the countenance of the Shroud to that place where it ought never to have ventured. The statue. The saint. Penitent one, now that my face has been restored, I may at last speak to you. My devotees will return to this chapel by virtue of your actions, and the sacrifice of the Blessed One, who will never be forgotten. O oh, Regular, seek my forgiveness no more, for you have it. Now you're by my side, and can rest your weary shoulders in my arms. As for you, Penitent One, accept this in memory of Regula. I am forever grateful. May my blessing be with thee. Regula's sacrament, you may go with...
The gaze of an innocent, looking for a glimmer of hope in the visage of so much desolation. It took nay more than that, for the shape of a heart to be molded out of the air itself. Behind the most wondrous clouds that did turn the sunset crimson. Oh, innocent vision! You madeeth the mirage true. Relying on pure faith. Twas then that the miracle gained its last chance. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison.
penitent one. My spear is not ready. It needs, I need your help to find the, then the ladies. Do you wish me to join you there? me to join you there
Anon, this glass sarcophagus shall open, the relic of mine own uncorrupted tongue, and its secrets shall soon be yours. Then this shadow can give thee no more. I go soon to that lodging between light and nowhere. This shall be our farewell. Dove, who borrows thine color from the raven, escape your gilded prison. The resting time between the thundering beats of the descending heart shorten irrepressibly, thus heralding the imminent birth of the new child. Hasten your steps to meet it, Penitent One. Stop above. The child cast your eyes upon our shop window. We are.
with this crystal. One more mark. You have acquired the last of my web. There are... But our sir so the snow This endless waiting. For I am the first penitent, and you shall be the last. Now let the Crimson Bindings finish what they once began. My penance is far from over.
The child is born, the clouds open up before thee, and shed crimson tears. Thus begins the work of the High Dramatist. The child, the cl the will. Incorporeal and inscrutable fathers, I am the heir of your all-encompassing light. Devotion itself, embodied in weathered flesh and gilded filigree. Your magnum opus, Though I am crowned with your glory, why do you censure my presence alongside you? What is this obscure darkness of unanswered cries that prevents me from understanding the purpose of my birth? Are the same crimson clouds that heralded my welcome the grave omen of your judgment? If this confrontation is proof of thy dignity of your glory, then so be it.
Now I understand. And for this, I offer thee my humble thanks. This pain is my baptismal sacrament that will unite us in communion to make it flesh. Thus, we will be reborn as a new symbol incarnate, overflowing with devotion. The beginning of a new era for the miracle. The second sign.